yeah, we might as well move on. Uh, you <laughs> want us to stay away from all things cyclocross. And I mean, speaking of worlds, the world championships will be in Switzerland. We spoke about that last week while Patrick was out in Utrecht. And well, there's been speculations now. Could Jonas Vingol, who's actually a resident of Switzerland now, could he potentially win it and become the first Dane to win since Mass Pilsen? Personally, I don't think so. Um, Rude. I know, I know. I'll start with a pick. I don't think so. To be honest, I I, I just think that we're missing proof of being a go as a one day racer. Yeah, he won that stage in the in the Rhone Valley, that well that classic in the Rhone Valley two years ago. But that's one, and it's not the highest level of racing. I think there are more legitimate contenders in terms of Avanard and Tadej Pogacar and so forth who are also on the start list. I just don't think we've seen enough from Vingo over a two hundred plus kilometer long uh, long one day race. I just don't think he has that race savvy. Oh, is that harsh? Say it. The World Championships is such a difficult race, and you have, you have to be really good at tactics to win it. And I just hit v- v- Vingo happens to be on the best team in the world. And sometimes his tact, I think his tactics personally are very different to the team's tactics. I think he he's on a team that are very good tactically in Yobo Busma. If he was on a Danish national team where they've got other guns as well on that team, and it's a different sort of director w- working with him, I'm going to say it. Vingo does not win it. It's the same kind of debate we've had with Froome as well in the past and other Grand Tour contenders. The closest week we got was Nibali really as a Grand Tour contender back in 2013 when he was right up there in contention and at the World Championships in Italy. I just do not think we're going to see Vinko on that final podium in Zurich next year, even if he does have his, his glitzy new Swiss residence permit. I mean, Valdetto won it in Innsbruck and he, he was a GC contender and Romain Pate was second. Okay, 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 okay. But... But, 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 podium Liege, but, but, Liege, and Valverde had won it multiple times. Jonas has not podium the monument yet. I think you need to really be up there contention for a monument to be considered a contender for the World Championships. It's quite rare to really see people just jump into the worlds and make a big splash. Even Maz Peterson, he was up there in, in, in a monument before his surprise World Championship victory in 2019. However much I do agree with you, Ewan, I, I will play devil's advocate. <laughs> I'm not saying. devil's advocate. You're playing the good side if you're going for Vingo. Because because Jonas is so bad at one day races, nobody will expect him to absolutely launch it with 80 Ks to go and win solo. Because they'll just be like, ah, oh, he's got no idea what he's doing. We'll bring him back. No problem. I mean he might just solo off. I mean, I saw a video earlier today where Pagacha said that he he talked to Jonas towards the end of the tour this year and said, if you did like an Ardennes race and you race like you've been racing here, you'd probably do really well. To which I don't know what Jonas said in response, probably something like, don't be so daft doing something so entertaining. That's absolutely ludicrous. I'd like to see him actually give it a crack, to be honest. I mean, who else? Pedersen, I'm not sure how hard the climb is, but I would say that the course is too hard for Pedersen, so therefore their leader would be Skelmoser after that. But I would just like to see Jonas give it a go. But it's a freaking long race, isn't it? It's like 270 k's. It's mental. And it's hilly like all day. It's not just like flat, flat, flat. And then some, you know, distance at the end. It's not like a San Remo. It's like hard all day. So maybe the continued climbing will help Jonas. Possibly. To play slightly the other hand, the other hand of the argument. I'm going to say this now. Let's bookmark it for 12 months time. Skiermorza gets a better result than Vigo. I mean, it's, yeah. It probably Skelmos is more likely to podium than being goal. Yeah, it probably is. A well, lot of people are more likely. But being a goal, moved to Switzerland to do reps of the circuit every single day. So by the time we come there, it'll be amazing. I will Rito, get Rito Rodriguez literally designed up Welter to stage in 2015. He didn't win it. I mean, Rodriguez at the time was in 2012. He should have won that Welter. Yeah. Ooh, okay, don't open that one. I enjoy the course of the World Championships because it's very it's very borderline between quite a lot of riders. It overlaps with a lot of different types of people. Obviously, Pagatra and Vanar are like the standout people, but I think there's going to be a big mix of maybe some GCS-esque riders in there, maybe some classic-style riders who really improve on their climbing. I think you're going to have a big mix in there. And I'm still thinking about Jonas. If he comes off the tour just flying, maybe he could do something. Obviously, like you say, his tactical nous is going to have to actually come into play, which will hopefully further reinforce my opinion that Jonas Vingegaard does not have better racecraft than 
Tane Pigaccia, which people seem absolutely hell-bent on disagreeing with me with for some reason. But we'll wait and see. A year's time, we will know everything. The climb's only 1.9 kilometers. Okay, it is 276 kilometers, but... How steep is the climb? It's 6.2% amperage. Oh, well, the circuit one. It's so built for Pigaccia. That's going to be too much for Van der Poel. But it's like, we, we really lack nowadays those, like, like the Alaphilippe punchers from, like, a few years ago. We really lack those specialist punchers now, where all the punchers are also, like, GC riders, basically. So you're just going to end up with this, like, massive, just all of, like, GC riders doing well, which is why I kind of think that Jonas could be in there, because if he's just surrounded by a load of GC boys, he'll be like, ah, oh, this is all just, like, pretty... Pretty chill, pretty same same to what I'm used to. But yeah, Pigacha's just got like the kick. I mean, Avenapol as well. If he like Avenapol is going to be a big candidate in here as well. But yeah, you don't really have like those Alaphilippe like pure guys who you'd launch at the bottom of like a murder Blitania to win. Which is why I think it's going to be such a good race. Do we want to give a prediction as to where we think Jonas is going to finish? You go for it. Um, I'll go with 18th. I'm going to go for. 23rd. Well, I'm obviously not going to predict him to win because then you won't win. So I'm going to say third and then he wins. I thought Ewan was just going to say DNF, to be honest. <laughs> oh, that could be on the cards. He might not even start. DNF, DNF. doesn't start. It's too, like, this just, no, I'm not, yeah, I don't believe it. DNF, he doesn't do it. Has he actually done a Worlds? I'm not sure he has. Not on the senior elite level, at least. I'm not sure what the TT course is like, but in theory, he should do that. Right? I think yeah, but then like Froome didn't do the Worlds in the TT really until 2017. And that was because that was a course, but that was a course that really suited them. I just, I just don't think Jonas will do that. It's so boring. Yes. Yes, he should, it is. He should have done the Sterling one. He probably would have won. No, he wouldn't have. 80 kilometers on a TT bike. That's what he did. Okay, so looking at Jonas Vingo, the last World Championships he did was in 2018. That was at the under-23 level. A race that was won by Mark Hirschi. Runner-up was the late Björn Lambrecht. And he finished in 64th place. Oh my god. That was so bad. Yeah, but this is different Vingo. Maybe he wasn't peaking for it. To be fair, yeah, that, that was like the Vingegaard who... Had, had he even won that Tour of Polonia stage by that point? No, no, but he, he won the, the, the Polonia stage the year after. Oh, there you go. That's where, we, that's where we kicked off. That's That was the beginning of the uh, Vingegaard that we all know and maybe love. Maybe <laughs> We all yeah. know it at college. <laughs> I think uh, the Denmark were actually working for someone else during that day as well. Ah. Mm. So I'm trying to justify it. Come on. I'm pretty sure they were working for someone else. Uh, the best day in was Miguel Honoré, who was in 21st. Well, there you go. They weren't working. Yeah, I was okay. in 37th. They Jonas Begel, 44. 